Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're going to be looking at this 2016 Hyundai Elantra with a 1.8 liter engine in it. This will be the same, if not very similar, for the 2011 to 2016 year models. I'm going to be giving you a ton of information about emissions components, the locations, and some information about those. So stay tuned, like, subscribe, and share as we're going. Here is the underhood label. This label gives you a ton of information, such as this is a 2016 year model. That's the year that it's made. Let you know what the emissions certification is. This is a ultra low emissions vehicle here in California. If there's any tune up specifications or adjustments that will be listed here, this one lets you know that there is no adjustments needed during a regular tune up procedure. Also, the engine group or the automotive group, family number and engine number, that will be very helpful information when you're ordering aftermarket parts such as catalytic converters. This gives you a list of your emissions components two heated O2 sensors. That'll be in the video coming up. You have a warm-up three-way catalytic converter. I'll show you that as well. This also sh shows you that you have a three-way catalytic converter. It's not listed in this video. And if you have a check engine light on for a cat code, that's not the cat to replace anyways. We'll be covering the cat that would need to be replaced in the video coming up. Getting started real quick, right here on top of the valve cover is the PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation valve. This valve allows blow by in the engine to escape the engine by allowing air to flow through the breather right there on the intake and it goes or when the PC valve opens it pushes or sucks the air into the engine to go through the combustion process again and out the tailpipe through the catalytic converters and being clean air so if your PCV valve is bad it's stuck closed you could get excessive oil leaks if it's stuck open you could get lean codes you could get um, misfire codes a lot of odd codes with the PCV valve. I do have a video replacing that. Here, next, this is your emissions vapor purge solenoid. This solenoid allows emission vapors through that hose to go from the rear of the vehicle at the vapor canister up into the intake and again to be burnt through the combustion process and out the tailpipe to be cleaned up so we're not releasing raw fuel in the atmosphere. If you have any questions, make sure to ask away in the comment section below. If you need any parts or tools shown in this video, make sure you look for links in the description below as well. Here is your Bank One Sensor One Oxygen Sensor. This one looks real easy to replace. If you had a circuit or a heater circuit malfunction code, I would for sure just replace it. Uh, that's a very common code that it's being it's fixed by just replacing it. When you do replace these oxygen sensors, make sure you're getting direct fit replacements. You don't want to get the universal fit where you have to cut the wires. So make sure you get a direct fit and I would prefer brand-wise the NGK, if not OEM, uh, for this oxygen sensor, if you could find them. So Bank One Sensor One, this oxygen sensor tells the computer how much fuel to give or take away from uh, the mixture, the fuel mixture, to get you your best optimal uh, fuel air-to-fuel ratio, such as a 14.7 to 1. That oxygen sensor, the Bank One, is responsible for most of the work adjusting all that. Here's your Bank One Sensor Two oxygen sensor. This oxygen sensor is responsible for checking the efficiency of the catalytic converter, and that's it. It doesn't adjust any efficiency. It shouldn't give you a different drivability if the sensor is going bad. Again, if it was a heater circuit malfunction, I would just replace it. It could be something else, so don't be mad if it is something else. But if a heater circuit, for sure, if you're getting a weird um, code out of it, like a P0420, and you're over 110,000 miles, you're probably going to have to replace this front cat and the rear O2. So looking through the passenger side wheel well, you can see here is your warm-up catalytic converter and your rear oxygen sensor. Warm-up catalytic converter right there, that's the one monitored by the computer by using this Bank One Sensor 2 oxygen sensor. You do have another catalytic converter down line in your exhaust stream, but that one is not monitored by the computer. So I forgot to get to that one while making this video. <laughs> Uh, but there's another cat. Don't worry about that one if you get a, a cat code. Now, last thing, your emissions vapor canister and the emissions vapor vent solenoid. Here's the solenoid itself attached to the canister. This vapor vent should hold pressure when there is no 12 volt uh, electricity applied to that connection right there. You could remove the hose off of the solenoid and put a vacuum gauge on there, apply some vacuum, and then apply nine volts to that electrical connection with a disconnected 
9 volts to the solenoid, and it should release the vacuum. Here's the canister. It doesn't look too hard to replace. Fairly easy. So hopefully you don't have to get to that part or replace that part. But if you do, it's there too. Make sure if this video helps you out, like, subscribe, and share. Comment below. I have a ton of other videos on this vehicle. Air filter, cabin air filter, PCV replacement, spark plugs, and a lot of other stuff. Like, subscribe, and share. I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully I'll see you in the next hopefully helpful video.